Hello, folk. This is Poison Jam Plays. We're doing something a little different tonight. Normally, I play Rocksmith for you, and I play a jazz bass quite a bit. Today, we're going to start the process of building a new jazz bass. I have us here a JBK1 kit from Solo Guitars. The plan here is to show you guys the process of doing a do-it-yourself build a bass kit and then I will play it for some months and then the ultimate intention is to do a sweepstakes or giveaway at which point I will open up entries. It'll be a no purchase necessary kind of idea. Subscribers are on Twitch will automatically be entered. What I plan to do is put the colored strings on it like I have on my here bass so that it'll be a good trainer guitar and if a sale allows it, a copy of Rocksmith to bundle with it to put in. Unfortunately, as I am a very small outfit here, this is it's completely out of my own pocket. There will be some limitations on where I will be able to ship. I think I can guarantee Canada minus Quebec and the territories and the United States mainland, so excluding Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, hopefully in the future, if I can afford to do so, uh, I will open up the contest territories to that. So not only is the plan to do a giveaway for it, I am going to do multiple stream sessions where I document the process of building this guitar. Tonight, we are going to just do the very basics. I am going to unbox the base, make sure that everything is there, and then we're going to do quality checks to make sure that I don't have to send it back, get it exchanged or anything. So this will be just making sure that the scale length is correct and the distance between the, uh, the nut and the 12th fret and the 12th fret and the bridge is equivalent and it all equals out to a 34 inch scale. So on to the unboxing. So here we have a, a the box. Uh, the only thing I have done with this so far is that I took my address label off. So other than that, you're seeing it as is. These little marks are from me just taking the address label off, otherwise the box arrived in absolutely perfect condition. I was very pleased, uh, very happy. So. Here we have the Solo Guitars JBK-1, the Jazz Bass Kit. So I have not, this, ooh, the box just fell. Add that to the blooper reel. One of the things I realized is that I did not discuss at all with anybody what we're going to do with this bass. So I'm gonna check out the finish and see if we like it as is. I live in an apartment building, so it would be very difficult to paint this in any way that I would be happy with the quality of the product. We'll see what my options are. So here we go. Stop, before starting any work on this solo do-it-yourself kit, please make sure to complete the following checklist. Visit sologuitarist.com slash wiring uh, diagrams. Inspect the neck, body, and hardware to ensure that uh, you have everything to complete this kit. Pretty sensible, so we'll set that aside. And safety. What do we have here? Well, we've got a business card for solo guitars. A sales bill. Uh, I may have to blur that out in post. If so where should we start? Should we start with the small stuff? Uh, or one of the more exciting parts, like the neck or the body. Hmm. The neck is what is going to require my, the most attention right now to make sure that it's in good shape. That and the length to the bridge will be the thing that determines whether I can continue with this build or whether I have to send it back for a replacement. So let's get the small stuff out of the way first, I suppose. Oh, and the bag just tore open, but that's okay. I'm gonna try to keep this box in as good a shape as possible because my intention is to use this to eventually ship it. 
My hope is that whoever I ship this to will be able to construct it from uh, the neck and body being disassembled to save on shipping costs, which will allow me to ship it to more places. All right, we'll leave that. We'll leave that there for now. We've got a patch cable, which is probably the least exciting thing, but you have the super important Allen keys that you will require for adjusting the bridge and truss rod of this kit. Uh, we have got our bridge. It looks like a, I think it's a four string kind of goto style bridge with all the required um, screws as well as the screws for the uh, strap screws. Uh, we've got a set of strings. I will be replacing these with the colored Dr. String uh, set before I send it to anyone. Next, we have the back plate. This is how you will attach the neck to the guitar body. Solo guitar kits come with an extra plastic cover, which is kind of nice as an add-on. I don't think I'll be using them. Uh, this bag here contains the tuning machines. You can probably see there. They're pretty standard looking, uh, as you would expect from a basic build your own base kit. What is in this last uh, box here? Ah, it's, it's the control. Uh, it's the controls. So we have our volume and tone knobs for the two pickups. All right. Now it is on to, I guess, the bigger and more exciting pieces of the kit. Let's start with the neck. Let's uh, take it out of its packaging, see the uh, finish on it and see if I'm happy with it. Okay. Uh, so we've got a small black mark on the back here. I don't think that's intentional. Let me quickly uh, bring up the product page so I can Tell you what this all is made of. All right. According to the product page, what we have here is an unfinished maple neck with black wood, uh, engineered rosewood. Uh, they describe it as. Uh, it's not even on first touch. It's not the smoothest fretboard I have ever touched. That's for sure. That's what you would probably expect from a basic uh, jazz bass kit. The neck feels a little rough to the touch. We might want to finish and sand that. And um, these fret edges feel, feel a little rough, if I'm being honest. But that's nothing that will stop us. All right, so pretty standard jazz style neck with the uh, what looks like the standard string spacing that I'm used to on my Getty Lee Jazz. And the inlays look like they're kind of a, a white perloid. Let's switch to our other camera. Like kind of a, yeah, a white perloid uh, inlays. And just so you can see the finish more clearly, or lack of rather, oh, I wish the camera would stop focusing on me. Here we go. So you can see more clearly about what you would expect. We're going to briefly set this to the side and I'm going to simultaneously remove the box from the table and take out our last piece. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, there's one last surprise in the box. A solo guitar's pick. So let's remove this box here set it aside. So what we have here according to the website is a mahogany body with a poly sealant. So we're going to see what that looks like. Ooh, look at, look at that. That wood, that wood, that is super grainy.
kind of feel like I'm going to need to do some sanding work on this. Uh, the grains are very raised and it's got a very rough texture. ASMR, you say? Is that pleasant? <laughs> Just to go over a couple things, it's a standard jazz bass body, as you can see. You have the pick card in this shape with the metal control center, whereas well, basic stuff here, but the P-Base comes down around more and doesn't have quite this oblong shape. You have cutaways uh, for the arm. Cutaway is a little shallow, but it'll work. And then we have a tummy cut as well. Uh, it's actually right from the factory. It's got a nice uh, tummy cut. It's a little shallow, but we'll work with it for now. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's the kit. So let's see which arrangement will we do for the just basic checks. Okay, I got space over here. Okay. So that is the very that is the very first check you're going to want to do. Make sure the dang neck fits into the neck pocket. Sounds obvious, but it's the first thing you're probably going to want to check once you get all the parts out of the bag. So to do the remaining checks. Uh, I'm going to need to take the bridge out of its packaging. Uh, so yeah, it's the pretty bog standard um, bridge that you find on many uh, ja basic jazz bases. Not unsurprising, but hey, looks good. I was expecting that this would come with the ground wire already done but it doesn't seem like that's the case. That's fine by me though, because one of the things I wanted to actually do was disassemble this even further right down to the pickup so that I can do the wiring right from the basic start. I do not yet know how to do fret work, so we're not gonna go as far as to pluck all the frets out of this, but maybe in the future if someone requests it, we can do a Jocko style pluck the frets out and fill it with epoxy and then sand it down into a fretless base. That would be an exciting uh, project to do sometime. All right, the next thing we wanna check is to make sure the scale length is accurate. Long scale bass guitars, anyways, which is actually the normal scale for your typical bass guitar. Maybe confusing to some people. They should be 34 inches exactly from the nut to the bridge. If, in, if I get any of my facts wrong, please correct me in the chat or comments below. That 34 inches should be divided evenly between these two points and these two points. If they're not, you will never be able to properly intonate the base. Note that because you're using the bridge, an adjustable bridge, it is only necessary that the 34 inches some falls somewhere within the range of where the bridge saddles can be adjusted. 34 inches is here, you can adjust the saddles back or out. We'll see, let's put that where it goes. Now we've got the neck resting like it would when it's installed. So we wanna take our measuring tape or long ass straight edge if you have one uh, and we're going to measure um, both where the E string would go and the G string would go and uh, we're going to make sure that 34 inches falls somewhere within the bridges range for those two strings. All right that's looking pretty good on the E string side. In fact we're almost right on the button without any uh, without any adjustments whatsoever. We're just at about 34 and three quarters. And just to confirm on the other side, all right, things are looking good for this so far. We've got a nice 34 inch scale. It seems like we're gonna be near the outer edge of the range of the bridge saddles. We're going to have to loosen these up to bring them forward for pretty much every one of the strings, but it does look like this bass should be able to be intonated properly, which is going to be key for playability. 
The very next check we're going to want to do is what I said about the distance between the nut and the 12th fret and the 12th fret and the bridge, which is essentially a more complicated version of what I just did. You want to make sure that the distance between those are equal. That means it should be in the realm of about 17 inches from nut to 12th fret, the double dots. And here we have 17 and a quarter inches and we have on the high end again about 17 and a quarter inches. Uh, so next is to m measure the distance between the bridge and the 12th fret. All right, here we have just shy, just shy of 17 and a quarter about. We have again, just shy of 17 and a quarter. So that's good news all around. That's the proper scale length from nut to bridge and the spacing between the nut and the 12th fret and the 12th fret and the bridge is also spectacular. Okay, not spectacular, not what you might expect from a necessarily Fender factory, but for a do-it-yourself base kit that is about 200 Canadian dollars, uh, well, 220 Canadian dollars, I think it's a pretty great starter kit. Uh, now that we've done that, there is at least one more quality check thing that I want to do before we finish up with the unboxing. Uh, and that's, I want to check this neck with the straight edge. Fortunately, the only straight edge I have is this, so it's not going to be a great, uh, it's not going to be great. So what you're basically going to want to do is to look down this neck and see, okay, we've got a, on this neck, uh, another thing I didn't cover is it's a neck truss rod uh, adjustment, which is unlike my Getty Lee, which is unlike my Getty Lee jet, uh, Jazz Bass, which has the truss rod adjustment in the heel. All right, so yeah, the last thing you're gonna wanna check is of course that the neck is reasonably straight and not warped or twisted. So, all right, let's get to that. So you're gonna wanna sight down the neck something like this, uh, preferably when it's less blurry for you, and make sure that there's not a significant or undue extreme amount of bowing. So what we have with this neck, if you could see it like I do, is that the, the neck is quite um, concave in its default setting. Convex, sorry. Uh, we will see once the strings get on it, uh, but I think it will be adjustable to what we need for playability. I want to just one last time for my own sanity, check the straightness of this neck from the bridge to the nut. And it's looking fine. This definitely looks like it will be a totally playable and fun base project to work on. It looks like we have a nice kit to build in the future. So, I think we're more or less finishing up for tonight, but hopefully I've gotten enough footage right now to uh, cut and upload to YouTube so we can tell everybody else about this wonderful project. Thanks very much for tuning in to Poison Jam Plays. I appreciate your company and you tuning in to watch me do this unboxing. This is different from what I usually do, so I hope the footage is usable and I hope this actually ends up doing pretty well and generating some excitement. Just a reminder, we, uh, when we're done with this bass, I'm going to play it live for a little while, demonstrate that it works, and I'm probably gonna uh, slap my logo on it, assuming everybody's fine with that, and then we will do a giveaway at some unspecified later point in time for this bass. If you want to automatically be entered, 
into that giveaway. Uh, when I announce the date, when I announce the date, all subscribers will be automatically entered into the giveaway. But I will also have the Poison Jam website up and running by that time, with an option to do a no purchase necessary entry form. All the rules, regulations, and everything that I have to follow will also be available on the website at that point in time. So again, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this. The next few streams I do on this where I start constructing the base are almost certainly going to be a bit more exciting uh, than simply unboxing. Although a lot of people seem to like unboxing videos, so maybe I shouldn't be too certain there. Uh, but yes, we'll get to constructing this base in the new, near future. I'm interested to hear your thoughts about the wood grain on this let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you definitely think it needs adjusting or some work or if will you should stick with the plain wood grain for the first project. Maybe we should keep it simple, stupid, for the first ever Poison Jam base build. We'll save the hip shot detuners and all that uh, and the fancy paint jobs for some later project. All right. So I think I'm gonna end it there, which I've probably said a few times by now, but I'm just getting YouTube roll stuff. So thanks for sticking around. Hey everyone, it's Poison Jam again. I just wanted to give you a last minute update to let you know that there will be a new base construction stream, the first one, starting tomorrow on July 4th. Uh, I will announce it via my Twitter or Facebook when it starts, but we, will be beginning, uh, I've decided the body of the base is a little too rough to go unfinished. So we are going to start the process of building the base by applying a water-based grain filler. This is the thing I've been waiting for for a while. So tune in tomorrow to the Poison Jam base stream. So that's July 4th of 2020. And you will uh, get to see the and you will get to see the beginnings of the do-it-yourself base construction project. Cheers.